What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Take him off for a minute, put him somewhere safe. I am still having a nightmare with laptops. <laughs> like proper nightmare with laptops. I was using it and it was just um, sort of rendering the latest video and whatnot. And uh, it just all died. Like just completely dead. Um, so I thought, oh, all right, had a look at it. And there was no charge light where the charger plugs in. So I thought, right, charger's knackered then. So um, took it down and got it tested where I got it from. There went, yeah, there's nothing coming out of it. <laughs> they lied. Um, I ordered another charger. That turned up. Yay! It was the wrong one. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> so I found out the right part number. Then I ordered another one. That one turned out. I plugged that in and it was still dead. It wasn't charging at all. So what I think it is, is the, you know, the socket that you plug the charger into, I think that's goosed. So um, I'm still trying to sort all that out at the minute. So all I'm doing is I'm going to carry on filming stuff like this. Um, and then when I get my laptop sorted, which is hopefully going to be Monday or Tuesday, it's probably going to be Tuesday now. Um, then uh, I can, you know, I can get it sorted. Oh, I know. Helps if he comes off. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing, I'm having this off. I mean, you know, it fits. I'm happy with that. I'm well happy with it. Um, and I'm going to start rounding everything over. I do have a sneaky plan on how to do it a little bit quicker than I was going to do it. So hopefully that's going to work. But he needs to come off first. And he is a snug fit. Right, let's get this off. Right, so basically I just need to round all these edges over because it looks quite boxy at the minute. Um, and I think rounding the corners over is going to change the way it looks quite a lot. I reckon. Um, I've got some little radius cutters and stuff, we'll dig them out in a minute, but essentially it's all these corners here, apart from this bit, because obviously I want it to, you know, the speed out to fit nice and snugly in there, but everything else I want to round off. Hogging out the bottom, that's going to have to wait. Um, so anyway, I'll come up with a way of doing it involving this. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plonk him on there, uh, clamp it down, and I'm going to indicate against it so I know that that is totally sort of in line with the axis of the bed. Because that way I can just stick this on wherever I want, clamp it up to it, have another couple of clamps down here to hold it in place, and then I can machine that back edge, and then I can switch it round. And then I can come around and do it like that, and I can just whiz straight across the whole back of it. The radius is, they're obviously still going to need to go on the turntable. We'll drag him out later, because I need to do that recess in there for the, for the washer and the nut and everything. But that's how I'm going to do it, because I reckon it's going to be a damn sight quicker and easier um, than having to indicate on each of these you know, just clamping this down to the bed and then indicating on the face and getting it just right, machining that bit, taking it out and having to re-indicate everything again. I'll just use a fence. That'll be fine. Right. Let's um, sort some clamps out. We can have a go at this. all snugged up I'll just make sure 
Right, he's all snugged up. He's hard up against this fence at the back here, and all I want to do is take these two corners here off, just round them over, and then I'll spin it around and we'll keep going. Um, I've got it up on a set of one, two, three blocks, just so I've got clearance here for my router bit. Um, this is what I'm using. High speed steel router bit. And it's just a round over. You can see the, the cutting edge here. It's basically just a form tool. I want to give these a go though, because they've got this, this bearing on the bottom. So the idea is, is that I'll be able to wind this into the work until the bearing just touches down, and then I'll feed it down vertically so I can take the corners off. That's the idea anyway. I'm hoping it's gonna work, but, you know, as with all this stuff, we shall see, eh? Um, where are you going? Go that way. Have we got clearance for everything? Yes. Right then. Um, let's turn you on. What speeds are we running at? Uh, right, this is a pure guess. I'm just going by the sort of the outside diameter of that, and I'm probably thinking 740 would do ish. I'll try a light cut and see how we go, but I'm only, I'm only doing these two little bits to start off with. Um, but I reckon we should be okay there. Right, so let's fire you up and then wind you in. So we're just on this back corner. Here's a lovely radius. Those cutters do a brilliant job. Really, really good. Um, I'm running at uh, 740 RPM. Feed speed is probably slow. I'm doing 1.43 uh, inches per minute. I could speed it up, but I don't really see the need. I'm getting a lovely finish on it. It is all going to get dressed up and stuff again anyway. Because, um, yeah, I've got all these surface scratches and everything else that I need to take out. But I'll get a picture and stick this up once I'm done. Right, so um, if I set a zero there on my Z, I can flip it around and do these bits and I can get it exactly the same. Right, let's do that then. Where's my spanner? I wasn't really sure if this was going to work or not. <laughs> And the idea with this fence is literally I can just spin stuff around. Um, 
and I'll still have it all dead level. Give him a blow. Right, an awful lot of this is going to have to be rounded over by hand. Um, I'm trying to do these bits in here, but I can't get close enough because of the, um, the collet chuck. And also I can't get low enough because of the, the length of the tool. I've took the bearing off the bottom. and gets me like a couple of mil, but it's still in enough. Um, so I'm just going to have to do those bits by hand, I reckon. Um, pom, 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 pom. Could have a go at, could get the rotary table out and have a go at these though. That might be worth doing. All right, let's do that. Right, I am definitely running out of radiuses, the radiuses, radii, whatever, <laughs> um, that I can do on the mill. Um, you're gonna get this one in here. So this is the setup I've got. It's supported on one, two, three blocks here two big clamps over top of the one, two, three blocks. So it's basically supported under this central section. Um, I've cut my Del Rim plug down as well, because obviously I need to get tooling in the top of this. Um, and I've got my peg in the middle. So the idea is we'll put the tool still back in here, center up on the middle of that. So I know I'm smack over the center of this radius. And then we can try and get that one put in. Um, I am gonna have to do it by hand um but we'll just sneak up on it and see how far we get hey so that's the plan it might work i've had worse plans that have worked <laughs> by rights this is quite a good one Playing. I wanted to see what it's going to look like all brushed up and stuff and rounded the corners off and all that sort of stuff so today is Saturday I did take this into work with me and on my lunch break I had a go at it and, and started rounding all the corners over and stuff I just want to see what the finishing is going to start looking like um, I've still got a ton of work to do but uh, can you see that 
it's all looking quite nice I reckon if you have a look at the underside that's the machine marks that's just DA down to try and get rid of some of the stripiness um, and then I'm just going over it by hand with some scotch bright WD-40 and a block um, just got a piece of angle because it's got a radius to it as well so I'm getting to some of the corners um, and it's just a case of just keep doing that basically I would use the scotch bright wheel but that thing when it's spinning is actually quite aggressive um, and I want all my roundy bits where I put them, not where they ended up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I reckon it's good. See, I can't decide if I do it as a brush to finish or if I just polish the shiznick out of this thing. I'm, I'm tempted to go with the polish option. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, I was watching, I quite often go back and just have a nosy through Craig's videos and stuff. And there was one where he was working on Dan's bike and he was going on about brushed finishes and that they dull up and you have to stay on top of them with this stuff all the time. And it takes no time for them to, to dull. Apparently you can lacquer them. I only like the idea of that because I was, oh, hello loads of messages i've seen it where um you know moisture gets in underneath the lacquer and it all lifts and it looks just looks nasty so i am tempted just to polish the bejesus out of this thing the other reason to do it is if there's any wibbly wobbliness going on anywhere you'll see it in the reflection so i can correct it and make it all look good so and you know it's going to be sitting on top of chrome forks and all that sort of thing. it wouldn't look out of place would it I don't think. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to leave it as a brush finish for now. I just want to see how quickly it's going to dull up. Um, right. So next job, I suppose, is to put the recess in for the washer. Like that. And then we can sink it down a bit because I want to inset the nut into that as well. Um, or do I take it out the back and leave all that proud? I could do, couldn't I? Don't want to do that. Let's have a look and see how it fits. Right, we're all clamped up. I've uh, located my hole. This is all centered up and everything else. Just, you know, with that bit of drill rod in the hole and, you know, crank it down and everything else. Set me zeros, so that's all good. And I've locked off the table, so we ain't going anywhere. I just want to know how deep I've got to go. That's a 10 mil bull nosed end mill. So the radius it's going to give is like a 5 mil, which is fine. And we are going to be taking the back out of this yoke when we do it, which is fine. Just means that because it's at an angle, any water they're collecting there is just going to roll off the back of it. So I'm happy with that. So we've got 2 mil of thread sticking out, or 2 mil of steering stem sticking out the top of this when it's on the bike. So I'm just having a check and see what's what. To there is six. To the top of the thread in this nut is six. And then we've got clearance. We washer, how deep are you? That's three. So that's nine mil. I need to get my socket on as well. Uh, what's the OD on this? Call it 40. OD of the washer. 36. But it is one of them canonical washers. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but it's not a flat one. It's got like a, like the center is raised up. So he's gonna squish out a little bit. So we're gonna need a little bit of wiggle room. So if we make that 39. And then I have a five mil radius. That'll look all right. And it gives me the clearance to get the socket on, plus some. So we should be fine on that one.
right, I reckon we is there. <laughs> it's not bad, I do like the finish I'm getting. Um, Brian, he's nowhere near as oily as he used to be. Because I had his head off and I put those two O-rings in those, in those grooves on the spindle. There's hardly any oil coming out of him now, which is sweet. All right, let's um, have this off and we can stick it back on the bike and see if my nuts fit. I should do. I've still got to round the corners off, but I'm getting quite good at that now. <laughs> right then, so with a little bit of luck, You'll sit down like that. Where's me nuts? Ideal. Ideal. Right. Uh, Alan Keys. Right, it's the wrong way of doing it really. I should have had the headlamp off because obviously it's fixed to the fork legs on these stupid horrible brackets. But I was impatient and I didn't do it that way so I had to faff about doing one leg a little bit at a time. Um, but he's on and he does look the part as well. I will get a picture and stick it up just so you can see what I'm looking at here. But it goes together absolutely lovely and when you do these clamps up you know, the, the slit that I made in here, I mean, it barely moves, barely moves. Um, and it's all clamping up nice and snug and everything else as well. But it just, setting that stem nut in, just, it really does make a world of difference. As well as just giving it like a brush finish, because it cleans it all up and you lose all the machine marks and stuff. And suddenly it really does start looking like a nice little yoke. Um, today is Saturday, like I said. I think I said, I can't remember. <laughs> that was ages ago. Um, Jack, as I was in here early doors today because I had a load of hangers which I needed to get into Jack to powder coat for me. So he's got them and he's also got the speedo housing jobby thing. He's just chucking it all in the oven at the same time. Hopefully I will get that back tomorrow because uh, he's around tomorrow. I need to get all that stuff in here. Um, so we'll be able to stick the speedo in its housing, shove it on here, and we can start seeing what it's properly going to look like. I reckon it's going to look mint. I really, really do. There's only really one, well, a couple of things left to do. I've got those little idiot light things for the oil and the neutral. Um, so I need to drill the holes in at a 20 degree angle, but I can't really do that until the speedo's on there and I know placement and all that sort of stuff. Um, so really, there is only one more video left to doing these yokes, and then I can carry on with the rest of it and get it all back together again and on the road. <laughs> I want to have a go. I want to see if all this has been worth it. But anyway, so Steve-O's down tomorrow as well. Um, be nice to see the chunky goodness again, actually. I haven't seen him in ages. Uh, but he's coming down to shoot the breeze and pick up all his stuff. Pop and exhaust. I'm having that because I made that. And I reckon it is going to look really rather cool on here. We can lose this. Um, and once I get it all back on the road, we're probably going to give it a dyno run as well and see what the difference is between the power of this one and the power produced with that one. I don't know. I mean, if there's bugger all in it and that one looks nicer, right, then that one is staying on. If it cripples the bike, Steve-O can have it and I'll make a better one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's where I'm leaving it for today. We will see you all again really shortly because he's in tomorrow, so we're getting all that lot done. And as soon as these videos are done and dusted, they're just getting uploaded. That's it. Um, I'm getting my laptop on Tuesday and I had an email to say I'm getting my laptop back on Tuesday So I'll just get everything edited and shove it all up in one go Well, you know as soon as it's done, but that's where I'm leaving it. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do hope you're well and staying safe We will see you on the next one. Later